Hey guys, what is up? It's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com back with another project. And if you're a DJ and use tractor software by Native Instruments, I think you're going to really like this one. So if you've been following my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash notes and volts, you know that at the end of the stream, we sometimes like to do some live music production using all this fun gear. At the heart of the setup is this Tractor S4 Mark III controller which is really cool and allows me to bring all the audio in, mix it and add effects and also mix in some live tracks. So it's a really cool setup. The tractor software comes with a loop recorder that allows you to do some live looping, which is something I was really interested in. But when I got the controller, I looked around and noticed there are no controls for the live looping. Apparently on this latest version, they decided to get rid of the live loop controls because I guess they figured that DJs don't use it and it was just taking up unnecessary space, which may be the case, but for me, that was a major downfall. So like most of life's problems, you can solve them with electronics. And I decided to create a custom controller that is gonna bring that functionality back to the S4. As I do with a lot of my projects, I like to start out with the enclosures. Once again, I'm going to use a Hammond enclosure. This is the 1590 BB. And by having the enclosure to start, it lets you kind of see how much room you have to play with and lets you lay out the controls a little easier. I made a little front panel template out of cardboard just so I can see where the controls will be and how they physically line up. I decided I'm going to have a button for each function of the loop recorder and I'm going to have a potentiometer in the middle that's going to act as a wet dry mixer for the effect. As far as the buttons go, I'm going to use these ones since I have a lot in stock. So these are normally open momentary push buttons. Some have LEDs, some don't. In this project, I'm going to use a red LED button for the record spot here and that's going to allow this to light up so if you're in a dark club and you're trying to find that record button hopefully it's going to stand out a little bit so here's what i came up with for the circuit here are the five buttons that we need and the potentiometer for the mix plus our led to drive everything i'm using a teensy lc processor which i really enjoy they're basically Arduino compatible boards, but I find they handle USB very nicely. So I can turn this into a USB MIDI controller very easily. Now this circuit isn't gonna require a lot of power or input, so I'm using the Teensy LC, which stands for low cost, which means it's the lowest cost processor they do, which is great because we all like saving money. Okay, so let's take a look at the schematic and I'll show you how I put this together. All the buttons and LED are connected to the digital pins on this side of the Teensy. And if we look at our circuit, you can see that I have the ground pin from the Teensy going to this blue strip. So this entire blue strip is grounded. All the buttons have a wire going to that blue strip, so that grounds one side of the switch. And then I have a jumper wire going from the other side of the switch to each of the digital pins. The LED I have connected to pin 5 on the Teensy. And there's one important thing you have to know. On the Teensy LC, only certain pins can handle 20 milliamps. Most of these pins can only handle 5 milliamps. So if you're going to drive LEDs directly from the Teensy, you want to choose one of these 20 milliamp pins. So I chose pin five. Now also notice that I have this quarter inch jack also connected to the record pin. 
And I wanted that because I play guitar sometimes. And if you have played guitar, you know that it takes two hands and you can't activate the record button and jump back on beat one. So I figured by having a jack for a foot switch, I could trigger the record that way and still keep both hands on the guitar. So I thought that was really important. For a foot switch, I'm going to use one of these normally open piano pedals. Now you have to be careful when you buy these because sometimes they're normally closed. I buy this model because it has a little switch that allows you to choose which way it's going to operate. But all you have to do is plug it into the jack and if you step on the pedal, you're going to trigger the record. Now on the other side, notice we have our 10K potentiometer. One side is going to plus 3.3 volts coming from the Teensy. The other side is going to ground and the wiper is going to analog pin 9. This section here is the external USB jack that I'm going to incorporate into the final product. But for now, you can just plug a USB cable right into the Teensy and that will provide you power and USB connection. And like I said, we have our LED coming from pin 5 because that's a 20 milliamp pin. And we have a 330 ohm resistor in series with that just to limit the current. So pretty simple setup, just plug in your Teensy, hook up your buttons, one side to ground, the other side to the digital pins. Your LED is going to go from ground to the 330 ohm resistor to pin 5. Your potentiometer is going to have one side connected to ground, one side to plus 3.3 volts. So this rail is connected to the plus 3.3 volt pin on the Teensy. And the middle pin will connect to your A9 analog input. And if you want to use the foot switch jack, that just connects in parallel to your record button. It's actually a pretty simple circuit to build. Now let's take a look at the software. I'll include a link in the video description where you can download it. So I call this project the Looper, because why not? So under settings, I included a lot of parameters that you can change if you want. So the number of buttons we're going to use is five. The number of pots is one. The MIDI channel that all the controls will be on is one. And the debounce time will be 50 milliseconds. So if you find the buttons you're using are double triggering at any point, you can bump this up a little bit, but I don't think you should have to. Our LED pin is 5. Notice I have a little note, only use pin 5 for the LED. The potentiometer pin is A9. You could change that if you want, if you want to use a different pin. And the MIDI CC number I chose for the potentiometer is 107. So that's the MIDI CC channel that the message is going to go out on. This little section here defines which pins the buttons are connected to. So we've got 0, 1, 8, 9, and 10, but you could change those if you want. And this section sets the MIDI CC number for each of these pins. I chose 102 to 106, but once again, you can change those if you need to. To upload the code to your Teensy, you're just going to want to plug it into USB. Now I've already got the code loaded so the LED lit up, so that's our record light. Now I'm assuming that you've downloaded the software and drivers to get your Teensy board running. There's a great tutorial on the Teensy website where you can find out how to do that. But if you've done that, you'll have some special settings in your tools menu. Now this little comment here shows you how to set those up. So the board is Teensy LC, the USB type should be MIDI and CPU speed should be 48 megahertz. So go to tools, make sure your board type is Teensy, LC, your USB type should be MIDI, your CPU speed is 48 megahertz, and just make sure that your Teensy is showing up under your port menu. So there's my Teensy there. Once that's all good, just click upload. And the Teensy loader program should pop up and your Teensy should reboot and you're good to go. Another important thing is we have two tabs to this program. Make sure you have both. The name.c will give the 
Teensy a unique USB name. So instead of just being called Teensy, it will be called what we want, which is Looper. And the manufacturer is Notes and Volts, which is me, of course. So basically, this is going to rename our Teensy as Looper when it shows up as a USB device, which makes it a lot cooler. All right, now we're ready to try out our circuit in Tractor, which is very exciting. So just plug in your breadboard with a USB cable. Now I'm using a Mac for my setup, but I'm sure the Windows installation is pretty similar. Go to the Tractor menu, go to Preferences. In Preferences, go down to Controller Manager. You'll want to add a new controller, so add a generic MIDI controller. And then in the Import list, you should find our Looper controller listed there. So there it is, select that. Now you're going to want to add some input. So go to the Add In tab and go down to loop recorder and add each of these inputs. Once the inputs are in, they'll show up on this list. If you click each one, you should be able to get the preferences. The easiest way to program this is just click the learn button and then click the corresponding button on your controller and that will automatically type in the correct CC number. Now one important thing you need to change under the mode tab here you're going to want to set it to the correct mode so once you select the input you can see the mode down here and you can select which one it is. Record button should be a toggle, the dry wet pot should be direct, the delete loop should be a trigger, the undo redo should be a trigger, the size should be an increment, and the play pause should be a toggle. So once you've got all those set up, just double check that the MIDI CC numbers are the same as the ones you set up in your program. Now we can close the window and try it out. So here's your loop recorder. If you, it's not visible, just click this little icon here. Now if I press the size button, you should see the size increase in the size window, which is great. It's doing it. You can also see the MIDI activity on this light here. So we'll set it at four beats. If I turn the pot, I should see my dry wet pot turn the same direction and it does. That is great. So we'll set that right in the middle. Now if I push the play button, I should get the play light lighting up, which it is. Now to test this out, we're going to, uh, we'll do a little loop. So let's get a drum beat going. Good enough. So here's my record button. You could also do it with the foot switch if you want, but let's press it and do a little synth line. All right, so you can see it's looping. Now let's try our, our mix knob. So if I go clockwise, I should get only my loop. And as I go counterclockwise, I'll get more of the backing track until I have only the track. All right, great. Now let's try the play pause. So right now we're playing, let's stop it. And it stops, let's play it again. All right, that's great. Now let's add a little uh, second loop on top. Hit the record button again. Okay, so now we have two loops going. Now if I want to get rid of this new loop, just hit undo. If I want to bring it back, just hit redo. And 
And if I want to delete the whole thing, just hit the delete button. And it's gone. Cool, it works. So there you go, guys. We have a functioning loop record controller for our tractor setup, which brings that functionality back to the Mark III, which is fantastic. So obviously you don't wanna leave it on the breadboard. You wanna put it in a nice enclosure, make it look professional. You can use anything you want. Use a shoe box, margarine container, uh, anything you can think of, 3D printed, whatever you want. What I'll do in the next video is come up with a professional looking enclosure and show you how it's done. And hopefully that will give you some inspiration on your own, but you have everything you need to build your own right now. So get started. And if you do, make sure you send me a picture because I'd love to see it. Once again, I'd like to sincerely thank all my patrons on Patreon. Thanks a lot, guys. So that's going to do it for this video. I will see you very soon and we'll finish this up, but get started, build your own. I'll see you next time.